She was beautiful and smart. She was athletic. She was a good person. Today, friends and family said goodbye to a young girl shot and killed at 15. It's scary anytime anything like that happens anywhere around, but especially when it's right next door. A man wanted in connection to the murders of a Laurel County couple is now in police custody. We speak with the victim's neighbor in the latest developments. And the Cats face off against the Mississippi State Bulldogs as UK tries to snag its third SEC win. We'll have the highlights from tonight's game. This is WKYT News at 11. Good evening and thanks for watching WKYT. I'm Sean Moody. Temperatures have dropped and it is starting to feel like fall here in the bluegrass. Let's start tonight with meteorologist Mike Linden and your no wait weather forecast. It is certainly chilly out there right now, Sean, where temperatures have now dropped into the low 40s and upper 30s in a couple of southern Kentucky spots. Wayne County, 38 degrees right now with most of Kentucky now beginning to really start to chill down. There's just hardly any cloud cover out there. And for that reason, that cool air is really settling in at the surface. And that is pushing those temperatures down. Of course, the Wildcats still playing right now at Commonwealth Stadium in a chilly 49 degrees. It's only going to get cooler as our evening rolls on. Most spots are down by almost 5 to near 10 degrees. Southern Kentucky really feeling the brunt of this cooler air. And here on the Defender Radar Network, again, just not seeing anything. There's nothing out there nor will there be anything overnight tonight. But what we finally will see as we head into Sunday are normal conditions, normal temperatures. We've been above, we've been below, but it looks like finally things are evening out a little bit. But it wouldn't be Kentucky if we weren't dealing with at least a little something. I'll show you what that little something is that we may run into tomorrow afternoon coming up. Mike, thank you. Today, hundreds of people came together to say goodbye. The funeral was held this afternoon for 15 year old Trinity Gay. Trinity died early Sunday morning last weekend after police say she was caught in the crossfire of a shootout outside a Lexington restaurant. Trinity was the daughter of Olympic sprinter Tyson Gay, and she was a student at Lafayette High School where she also ran track herself. Friends and family said goodbye to Trinity today, but also asked the community to do their best to keep her memory alive. Sabira Rayford went to today's service. She has tonight's top story. It's tough to say goodbye to someone so young. She just has so much to live for. It's, it's ridiculous. But they knew they had to, whether it was through a song. Or a poem. Living in a world where I don't get to see your smile would be the hardest thing I ever had to do. It's not about who she was, but what her memory can inspire. She was beautiful and smart. She was athletic. She was a good person. She was only 15, but it's clear that Trinity Gay touched a countless amount of lives. Today, the people that knew her best asked the community for change. We'll never be able to stop all the crime, but I really believe this city is too beautiful to have, you know, crime like this. Tyson Gay says his daughter was someone who saw the good in everyone. He says he wants to follow in her footsteps. I, I know it's impossible to save everybody, you know, but if I can save one kid, it would mean the world of Trinity, you know, and um, I, I think it starts with our young kids now. It starts with our youth, you know, and someone has to instill dreams and goals in them. Trinity's grandmother says they can take those dreams and run with them. I believe Trinity is passing the baton. Who is going to take it and run with it? Who is going to take it and run with it? Deltaria Jackson says she's ready to carry it. Just remembering all the good times and running as hard as I can just to make her proud. No one saw Trinity's death coming, but just like her personality, you can see her legacy of love and kindness from a mile away. In Jessamine County, Sabir Rayford, WKYT. Trinity Gay will be buried in Russellville on Monday. Police have charged four people in connection to her death. He was wanted for murder, but now the second suspect in a double murder in Laurel County is behind bars. Manchester police arrested 24-year-old Christian Roberts this morning. 
Last month, a grand jury indicted Roberts and another man, Bradley Lawson, in the March 2015 murders of Donnie and Sharon Jackson. Lawson was already in jail on an unrelated charge when he was indicted. Tonight, WKYT's Garrett Weimer talked to the Jackson's neighbors who say they're relieved. It's been a long time since neighbors have seen Donnie and Sharon Jackson. A year and a half now since investigators found the couple shot dead inside their burned home. It's scary anytime anything like that happens anywhere around, but especially when it's right next door. Finally, neighbors say more answers. Police say they found Christian Roberts at an apartment in Manchester and arrested him Saturday morning. Christian Roberts was indicted earlier this year along with another man, Bradley Lawson. Investigators say they're charged with two counts of murder and robbery, as well as tampering with physical evidence and arson. Neighbors who knew the Jacksons say they're relieved to know that the second suspect is also now behind bars. Still, for neighbors, the murders hit too close to home. And even though a lot has changed since it happened, and the Jacksons' old property even now has new owners, it's something neighbors can't forget. They're just glad they finally feel safer. Yeah, I hope that, uh, that if they are the ones that are responsible, that they do put them away for a long time because that was horrific. In Laurel County, Garrett Weimer, WKYT. Investigators described it at the time as a robbery gone bad. Roberts is being held now at the Clay County Detention Center before he's transferred back to Laurel County. He denied our request for an interview. It was another must-win game for the football Wildcats as they faced off against Mississippi State tonight at Commonwealth Stadium. The Cats kept fans on edge of their seats until the very end. In fact, they're still on the edges of their seats, aren't they, Lee Kay? Yes, they are, Sean. Lots of people still wondering what the outcome of this one will be. It's been a cat and dog fight at Commonwealth Stadium. Wildcats trying to pick up a third SEC win on this season. Third quarter, Wildcats pulling out the trickery. The double reverse play. Steven Johnson going deep downfield to Jeff Bedette. A 44-yard pickup and a touchdown. A little luck will do you. Two-point conversion was no good. Wildcats were down 14 to 12. Later in the third, now 17 to 12. Wildcats facing a third and nine. And Benny Snell going to pick up 34 yards and a touchdown. Two-point conversion gives UK the 20 to 17 lead. But Mississippi State had the answer. Fitzgerald rips off a 38-yard run for another Bulldogs touchdown. Nick Fitzgerald gets in. It's 24-20 state. Wildcats not going away, though. Johnson looking downfield. A jump ball to the end zone, and Bedette is there to pull it down. Made it a 40-yard pass. Made it 27-24. Cats back on top. Fourth quarter, Mississippi State facing a third and six. Fitzgerald's pass picked off by Marcus McWilson. He's got nothing but turf in front of him. Pick six for the Wildcats made it a 10-point UK lead, but Mississippi State has just scored to take the lead with just over a minute to play in the ball game. 38-37. Sean, we will have much more coming up a little bit later in game time. Right down to the wire. Thank you, Lee Kay. People are getting into the Halloween spirit in Lincoln County and using it as an opportunity to help others. This year marks the second year of the, that the Houstonville Haunted House has participated along with the Kentucky Blood Center for a blood drive. So far, the blood center has already nearly reached its limit for how much blood can be donated in one day. Owner Paul Gray says he's trying to find a way to make a difference. I was trying to think of something unique, something that was uh, that nobody else did, and plus give back to the community. Um, we're here at the Haunt House, we're really community oriented, we're very family oriented, and, uh, and we just want to help everybody. If you'd like to help out, there's still an opportunity to give blood and experience that haunted house. It'll be open tomorrow as well as the next two weekends. So there's also a haunted house for the kids in downtown Junction City. Families and city leaders gathered in Nicholasville today to shed a light on a growing problem across the country. That's coming up next on WKYT. Now, your hour-by-hour -hour forecast with meteorologist Mike Linden. Well, it has been an unusual fall here in the bluegrass. We've had temperatures in the low 80s. We've had temperatures like today, only making it back to the upper 50s. But things are finally making a turn for the normal here in the next few days. Right now on the Defender Radar Network, we're just not seeing 
anything. Now, that's part of the reason why temperatures are cooling off as quickly as they are through the evening hours. There's nothing to keep any warmth at the surface. All those clouds have exited to our northeast, pushing along the Atlantic coastline. Instead, high pressure building up to our south that will force the air from the south to work its way northward into the bluegrass. So that's going to cause those temperatures to get a bit of a bump up tomorrow by about 10 or so degrees, a difference you will most certainly be able to feel. Across the board, most spots now slipping into the mid to low 40s and a couple of them falling back into the upper 30s. Wayne County, Williamsburg, 38, 39. That is chilly. Cooler than where we were even at this time yesterday, mind you. But Sunday, temperatures recover really nicely with that, with that southerly flowing air pushing temperatures back into the upper 60s. 69 degrees or so around for your daytime high. And with all that sunshine, you're likely to see temperatures sneak their way pretty darn close to that 70 degree mark. So, this is what we're looking at as we work our way into your Sunday. Not necessarily going to find very much out there. Mild air in a weak cold front get here as we head into the overnight hours of Sunday and into Monday, but not necessarily bringing much of anything with it. The cloud cover does begin to seep back in as we head into Tuesday and Wednesday, but that's really it as far as any active weather chances go. That weak cold front coming in Sunday evening, yeah, that's going to bring us some strong winds. It'll get going early tomorrow morning in the double digits around 10 to 15 miles per hour. And then as we get into the afternoon, that's when things are going to get a, a bit stronger, heading up near 35 miles per hour. So if you plan on getting any yard work done outside tomorrow, maybe raking up some leaves, just be sure you put them in bags. Because if you leave them out in piles with winds like this, well, it looks like you'll be doing yard work again on Monday. So that is what we're looking at really for our Sunday. That's really about it. Not too much going on. The next few days looking fantastic here in the bluegrass. The next chance for us to be dealing with some active weather, that being rain and some thunderstorm chances, look to be Wednesday as we work our way closer to Thursday. But, Sean, if there's anything to take out of the seven day there, it's finally some normalcy and some consistency mm -hmm. with our temperatures. Yeah, nice day to get outside, head to Keeneland. That's going on. Couldn't ask for a much better day than tomorrow. Uh, hardly any cloud cover, temperatures yeah. around room temperature. Fantastic Sunday. Take that. Thanks, Mike. Earlier today, community leaders in Nicholasville gathered to shed light on a growing national problem while bringing families together for a day of fun. The Hope of Jessamine Fall Festival included games for kids, face painting, a petting zoo, even a former contestant from The Voice. And Wilmore native Jonathan Hutcherson came out to play a few songs. That festival is also an opportunity to educate the public about the growing problem of drug addiction. Organizers say the event was something the entire community could rally around quickly. It really all just came together out of a out of a night we we hold Sunday night recovery for the public, and we have a, we call it Crave Recovery Night Sunday nights. And uh, there was a night where I just challenged uh, the group to say, uh, what, what's your part? What what would you do to give back to your community? The event also drew the attention from many local politicians. Some of those included Judge Larry Van Meter, Russ Meyer, and Robert Gallet the third. The Wildcats are in search of a fourth win on the season. Lee Kay has an extended look at the highlights next on Game Time. And good evening, Kentucky coming off a bye week with a lot to gain hosting Mississippi State. The Cats likely needing to win two of the next three to make a bowl game. UK hasn't beat State in seven tries with Kentucky leading three to nothing in the second. Malik Deer takes the handoff and oh dear, breaking tackles on the way to a 45 yard touchdown. That made it seven to three Bulldogs. Three minutes to play in the second on third and seven. Steven Johnson is sacked, loses the football, recovered by Mississippi State. That, of course, would set up great field position. And Nick Fitzgerald capitalizes on a four-yard touchdown run, 14-3, State out in front. The Wildcats into the locker room down 14-6. We go into the third quarter. Wildcats pulling out the trickery. The double reverse. Johnson going deep downfield to Jeff Bidette. 
44 yards and a touchdown. A little luck will do you. Two-point conversion was no good. Wildcats down 14 to 12. Later in the third, now 17 to 12. Wildcats facing a 39, and Snell is going to pick up 34 and a touchdown. Two-point conversion gives UK the 20 to 17 lead, but Mississippi State had the answer. Fitzgerald rips off a 38-yard run for another Bulldog touchdown. Made it 24 to 20 state. Wildcats not going away. Johnson looking downfield. It's going to be a jump ball in the end zone. Bidette is there to pull it down. 40-yard pass and catch. Cats back on top 27 to 24. Fourth quarter we go. Mississippi State facing a third and six. Fitzgerald's pass picked off by Marcus McWilson. He's got nothing but turf in front of him. Pick six for the Wildcats. It's a 10-point UK lead. Cats can put it away on the next possession, but look at this. Johnson keeps the ball. Bulldogs spring it loose. It is a fumble, and Mississippi State is taking it the other direction for a touchdown to make it 34-31. So just over a minute to play now, 37-31. UK on top. Fitzgerald finds Ross in the front of the end zone. The extra point gave State a 38-37 lead, and wouldn't you know it, as soon as we got on the air here, Austin McGinnis kicks a 46-yard field goal as time expires to win it for the Wildcats. 40-38, to 38, Kentucky beats Mississippi State. Unbelievable. Meanwhile, next week, the Wildcats will travel to Missouri. Today, the Tigers hosting Middle Tennessee and the Blue Raiders came to play. Second quarter, Brent Stockstill finds Richie James. Look at James go. 56-yard touchdown pass to give Middle Tennessee a 27-21 lead. Into the third quarter, Demaria Crockett is going to go 21 yards for his fourth touchdown of the game, 35-34 Mizzou. But how about the Blue Raiders? They had the answer. Stock still hits Itavius Mathers on a four-yard touchdown to give the Blue Raiders the lead for good. And Middle Tennessee upsets Missouri 51-45. To 45. Seventh ranked Louisville hosting NC State. Lamar Jackson already the first player in ACC history with 15 passing and 15 rushing touchdowns. First quarter, Jackson takes it himself right up the middle, breaks a couple of tackles and scores from 36 yards out. Cardinals lead 7 0. Later in the first, Louisville up 10 0. Jackson finds Jalen Smith over the middle. And he's just going to run away from the defenders for a 74-yard touchdown, the longest play of the season for the Cardinals. Louisville led 17 to nothing, under four minutes to play in the half. Cardinals lead 34 to nothing. Jackson rifles a ball to Jamari Staples for the touchdown. Louisville makes it look easy today, 54 to 13 over NC State. Well, EKU still in search of a second conference win, but facing the second-ranked team in all of FBS football today, Jacksonville State. Colonels pumped up on their homecoming. Second quarter, and Benny Coney trying to make a play downfield, but Jacksonville State's Joel McCandless picks it up and takes it back 41 yards to give the Gamecocks the lead early. Later in the second, EKU's Devin Borders doing what he can do. He's done this several times. Blocks a field goal to keep it 7-0 JSU. However, Coney's first half woes would continue as Jacksonville State gets another pick six. This time via Jalen Hill. 60-yard touchdown. That pushed it to 14-0. EKU ends up losing at homecoming. 24-7. Well, if you like offensive football, you'd like today's game between Moorhead State and Jacksonville. Pick it up in the third. MSU trailing 45-35. Trevor Jones takes the handoff, and he goes 61 yards for the score. This man here had 241 yards rushing and four touchdowns today. Eagles were within three. Back to a 10-point game in the fourth. Lawson Page pushing the pile six yards for another Moorhead State touchdown. That made it 52-49 Jacksonville, but the fighting Sean Moody's would pull away and win 61 to 49. That's a third straight loss for the Eagles. Georgetown College hosting Division II's Alderson Broadus in the first. Georgetown's Clay McKee throwing it deep, but wow, what an interception there by the Battlers. Malcolm Lee to pick it off. Next possession in goal territory, and the Battlers strike first with a one yard touchdown from Brandon Jones. Hey, Jones, he wasn't finished. He's going to go in again from a yard out for another touchdown to make it 14 to nothing. And Georgetown would not be able to recover as they lose 38 to 13. Woo!
How about some football? How about some basketball? That season is just around the corner. The Cats put on a show Friday night in Rupp. That's next on Game Time. Tuesday night's Mega Million jackpot is $30 million. UK fans got their first look at the Wildcats in a basketball setting during last night's blue-white game. Isaiah Briscoe led all scores with 39 points, getting into the paint and scoring at will. As advertised, the Cats are quick and athletic, and John Calipari said that he is reminding his guys to use that to their advantage. Isaiah shooting the ball better, making free throws, shooting those better. Um, but we, you know, uh, you saw the speed of De'Aaron Fox. Oh, my gosh. One time he started walking, and I said, go. And then when second and a half, he shot a layup. Um, what just happened? I kind of don't run until he yells at me to run. So it was like one possession. Um, I was walking it, and he was like, go. And he was like, in two seconds, I dunked it. So um, I mean, I kind of wait until he tells me. But uh, I mean, it's something I'm, I'm kind of learning to do, uh, learning to use my speed a little bit more. John Calipari is getting ready for his annual women's clinic on Sunday at Rupp Arena. This is the first time it's ever been held at Rupp. A record crowd of more than 1,000 female fans will get to see this year's team. Fans will also be able to buy basketballs autographed by Coach Cal and the players. We're, we're going to have the players in the back if, as the ladies get basketballs. We'll have them sign, but I can't have them there four hours sign an autograph, so I will. I'm signing something for all the ladies. And then you can get a ball if you'd like to get a ball with, that the players are signing in the back. And, and uh, we're going to have pictures taken. So everyone will have a team picture with the team. So it will be, it should be fun. That's pretty cool. The UK women's team held its media day on Friday. Matthew Mitchell's team has a well-publicized offseason, losing some players and assistant coaches, but six players remained. Mitchell calls them the core six, and they are a valuable asset for him and the team's success. Yeah, I think definitely um, throughout the trials that we went through last year, it brought us a lot closer together. So we are like that core six, like he says. And I think that having the people from last year to bring along the people that are new this year, because um, we know the system, we know how things are supposed to be done. So just having um, that core group has really helped. And you see it in practice where we can coach players when Coach Mitchell's not having to do all the coaching alone because we know the system, we know what he expects. We're headed out to Keeneland. That's next on Game Time. The final Saturday, the fall meet out of Keeneland in a feature race, the $250,000 Grade 2 Lexus Raven Run Stakes. Lightstream, the 2-1 to one favorite in a talented field of 12 going to the post. Here's Kurt Becker. And here comes Malibu Stacy from fourth, swinging up on the outside. Lightstream going to run late. Down the center of the racetrack, still five lengths off the lead. Kanaya, the leader, final furlong of the Lexus Raven Run. Lightstream coming from the outside. And Malibu Stacy fighting on between them. Curlin's approval fourth at the rail. Lightstream will not quit. Lightstream rallies for Julian Leperu to win it. So Lightstream and Julian Leperu win the Lexus Raven Run stakes. A long shot Malibu Stacy coming in second. The exact to pay 276 bucks. If you get the $2 Superfecta, you would pocket a cool 34 grand. And the Cubs are headed to the World Series after shutting out the Dodgers 5 to nothing in game six of the NLCS. The first pennant for the Cubs since 1945. Good night, Kentucky.